It is early Saturday, August 25th, and this is your latest Tropical Storm Isaac update. During the course of the overnight hours, Isaac made landfall across western Haiti, but the inner core is doing fairly well as it passes over some of the higher terrain. Over the next 12 to 24 hours, a general west-northwest or northwest motion is forecast to continue, and the fear is that the circulation may start to pass north of the Cuban coastline. If it stays just offshore, then this could allow for more strengthening before Isaac reaches South Florida. Therefore, the Hurricane Center has had to issue hurricane warnings for all of the Florida Keys and portions of the southern Florida Peninsula. It is looking increasingly likely that Isaac could impact South Florida as a high-end Category 1 as it continues to strengthen as it makes its way across the southern half of the state. In the mid-levels of the atmosphere, a trough of low pressure or low heights is located across the eastern seaboard. This trough is the reason why the system, Tropical Storm Isaac, is currently moving toward the northwest. Over the next 24 to 48 hours, this trough is going to steadily weaken and the Atlantic Ridge is going to build back into southern Florida. This is going to allow Isaac to take a turn back toward the west-northwest, and that is why it should eventually move into the upper end of the Florida Keys and into the southeast Gulf of Mexico. Interests across South Florida should anticipate winds strong enough to cause numerous power outages, several downed trees, damage to mobile homes, and some minor damage to rooftops. In addition, we are expecting some significant rainfall. The latest HPC forecast is indicating anywhere in upwards of 8 to 9 inches to the south of Lake Okeechobee near the Florida Keys. And the latest Sunday outlook from the Storm Prediction Center does include much of South Florida with a slight risk of severe weather as there is the possibility of weak, brief, and isolated tornadoes. And the risk of that does begin to extend northward as we go on into the day of Monday. Once Isaac begins to move into the southeast Gulf of Mexico, the subtropical ridge will have at least temporarily been restored back toward Florida and the U.S. east coast. However, quickly thereafter, a series of troughs, particularly this one diving toward the southeast out of Saskatchewan, Canada, and this shortwave trough exiting the Rockies, are going to help weaken the ridging immediately to the north of Isaac over the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. Therefore, a gradual turn toward the Florida Panhandle is anticipated. The latest run of the GFS does show all of these features. First off, this is a look at the Saskatchewan trough. This is the minor shortwave trough exiting Colorado and New Mexico. This is the current trough situated out across the eastern seaboard that is soon going to weaken as the subtropical ridge temporarily builds back toward the west into Florida and the Carolinas. And of course, down toward the south, we do have Tropical Storm Isaac. We're going to advance this animation into the 48-hour time frame. And you can see that the troughing out across the east coast is steadily falling apart. That's going to allow for Isaac to continue moving westward rather than moving up toward the east coast. But as that westerly motion continues, we're also seeing an easterly motion amongst those two shortwave troughs out across the central and eastern United States. As we go into day three and day four, we can see that some of this remnant troughing is still forecast to make its way into the southeast, and that is the reason why Isaac will begin to feel the weakness, especially as it starts to intensify into a more potent hurricane to the south of the Florida Panhandle, so that northerly turns should occur. We also see better agreement with this idea from many of the models, and a decent consensus is starting to form between Fort Walton Beach and Panama City, Florida. However, there is still some model spread, and therefore all interest from southeast Louisiana eastward through the Big Bend region of Florida should continue to very closely monitor Isaac's progress. It is also interesting to note this morning that the ECMWF has also shifted toward the Florida Panhandle track, and both the GFS and European are showing a landfall in the same general region. However, the two models are not in full agreement, as you will soon see with the latest ECMWF ensemble pattern as we go into days three and four. By 48 hours, we can see that the ridging is making a return to the eastern seaboard, but as we go into day three and day four, the European is now fully breaking down the ridge as has been advertised by the GFS for quite some time now, and that is allowing the storm to lift toward the north in the general direction of Fort Walton Beach, Florida. However, by day five, the European is still building the ridge that it has had out across the central United States and this ridge is a little stronger once again within the European model 
and there is an outside possibility that either just prior to or just after a landfall whatever is left of Isaac does become trapped underneath this ridge and it lingers out across the Gulf Coast or just inland as we go into days 5 and 6. So far this is not the most likely solution as it could still get fully picked up by the trough and then get shot up toward the northeast. However, this European solution still needs to be considered as the steering currents are likely going to break down at least somewhat here within the next four to five days. The final landfall intensity along the U.S. Gulf Coast is still somewhat in question, but the next 24 to 48 hours is the most crucial part of that intensity forecast. If the center does clear all of Cuba, then the inner core will more than likely be ready for significant intensification once it arrives in the southeast Gulf of Mexico and it will have plenty of time over 31 plus degrees Celsius water temperatures so although the official intensity forecast is calling for an upper end category 1 a category 2 or even category 3 landfall cannot be completely discounted at this time so thank you for following all of the latest updates from 28storms.com if you have any questions you can contact us on our Facebook or Twitter pages and you may also want to check out 28storms.com slash Isaac as this is a web page containing all the latest news sources from around the Gulf Coast. So if you want to keep up with the latest landfall information, you can find it here. In addition, we also contain links to all of the local emergency management agencies on a county-by-county -county basis from Florida all the way to Texas. So this is your one-stop shop for all of the latest Isaac news as Isaac begins to impact the Southeast United States.